This is the Tabernacle Podcast with Adam Sharp and me, John Vermilia. And there is, as they would say in Buckley, Michigan, a crap ton of calories sitting on the podcast table right now. Delicious calories. Delicious that I've calories. Already dove in it. Dove in into? D- D- dived? dived? Dove? Yeah, I think it's dived or dove. I don't think dove is a word. All right. Easy there, Air Force. <laughs> yeah. Get out to the source. <laughs> As Where's Victoria? Yeah. There's a bunch delicious of calories. Delicious cookies. Yes. Delicious. Yeah. Are they cookies? Are they miniature cakes? Are they treats? Are they mm. Satan's temptation? I don't know. What they are is they're trace cakes. If you haven't had a trace cake, well, you just haven't lived. Yeah. And uh, Tracy Kalita has her own little business. And what I'm holding right here is a mint chocolate concoction. That was fantastic. What was the one that you already uh, I just tempted had me with? Chocolate peanut butter cookie. And oh, it is my days. phenomenal. There is not only Bro. chips, there is drizzled chocolate, just to tease you. And if it's peanut butter, it's healthy. I saw a peanut butter cup inside there too. I don't inside know if you saw it? that. Yeah, look at that. That's a peanut butter cup, bro. I'm telling you, that one's going home, God right. willing, and Matt Hughes doesn't jump me. Who's sitting in today uh, producing, uh, our executive Matthew. producer producing? So the reason that we have all these treats is mm-hmm. it is our privilege, our guest today, um, our friend, our brother. We have Tom Kalita, Tracy's husband, yeah. mm-hmm. the man behind it all. The man, <laughs> are you the inspiration for Trace Cakes? Oh, I, I, I couldn't claim that. I, I, I really feel like she's inspired. You she's know. inspired? She's inspired. Are she's, you the official taste tester? Uh, well, it's between myself and Natalie, our <laughs> daughter. <laughs> yeah. um, I think she also claims that title, but, you know, that's, you know, up for debate, I guess. Yeah. But when All it's right. something like this, I mean, do you ever find yourself saying, mm, just didn't get it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, or are you just like, no, I'm just How grateful. many times have you told her? Not a good one. Don't make it again. Uh, I'm I'm not sure. I think there's been one or two times where I was like, "That's different." You know, that's different. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a di- wise man. That's, <laughs> that's different. You gotta yeah, be careful about how you say it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's something different. I'm not sure about, it. but yeah, she's an artist and um, a baker, uh, a teacher, and a wife to you. And it is uh, a privilege to have you here. So thanks, okay. Trace Cakes, mm-hmm. um, for sending some treats today. But thank you, uh, Tom, for being with us today. Yeah. Oh yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. So. Let me start with Adam. Adam, mm-hmm. when's the first time that Tom Kalita was on your radar? Like, where did you first meet Tom Kalita? Basketball. Yeah, playing basketball. We used to play mm-hmm. on Sunday evenings, right? Yeah. Sunday evenings at the at the Kingsley Middle School. Yeah. Was yeah. it like like an open rec thing or something like that? Yeah, yeah. it was, was kind of by invite. But yeah, yeah, by invite. But we yeah, we just had the gym on Sundays and um, yeah, met him when I'm playing basketball. So. And then later down the road through church, but yeah, yeah, yeah. fight club is where we got close. But I first met sure. him playing basketball. With gotcha. Bill. I remember seeing Tom. I think the first time. I think a Saturday night service. I think it might have been a Sunday morning, but a mountain of a man walks through the door, and I'm like, "Who's that guy?" <laughs> and um, I was introduced to you as a football coach. I believe you were help or you were coaching at that time or Mm -hmm. football came up as your background is in football. We'll get into your story today. We're going to talk about your story. But, um, also what I remember is a fight club that both Adam and Tom were in with me and one of my close friends, Ryan Jones and a bunch of other guys, I guess we're not supposed to talk about fight club, but those guys don't care (laughs) if we say that they're in that (laughs) fight club, but it was one of the best ones I've ever been a part of. And it lasted about nine months and, you were a huge part of that. And I don't mean that as a pun, mm-hmm. uh, just watching what God was doing in your life was huge. Yeah. And we've been asking you for a while. So thank you again, sir, in yeah. advance. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> 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 That's not even fair. He's a gentle giant. But yeah. uh, Tom is involved. His wife plays in the band. She's not just a baker. They're followers of Jesus. They're raising their family. Um, Tom works in the area um, and does have a background and an expertise in football. But um, we just want to hear a little bit about your life. How do we bring glory to God through mm. what he's done in your life? So let's just go all the way back to the beginning. Yeah. A certain guy that used to sit in this chair, who's a lot bigger than me, <laughs> would always start this way. What is your earliest memory? Ooh. So I used to, uh, 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 you know, 
tease my mom about this a little bit, but we had gone on a family trip uh, to Maine, you know, just kind of a road trip type of thing and with extended family. But the first thing that I remember is we were leaving the hotel and, you know, like it was three, right? So I had a blankie and we had left it in the room and I was waving goodbye as they were carrying me away from the hotel. And I used to just, I, I've, I'm, a, I'm a quiet guy. You know, you guys probably know that about me, uh, that I don't talk much. And back then I didn't either. And so I didn't think to tell them that we had oh, left it. <laughs> and so I always tease so my mom. You're waving? Wow. Uh, I, w- I waved goodbye to my blankie uh, as we were oh. leaving the hotel. Uh, <laughs> so she has no idea. Like she didn't know that. She No, they didn't know. It. Obviously it was just, I think right. it was folded up at the end of the bed and it was just, you know, one of those things where we left. And I always, you know, used to tease my mom about that. And wow. she always thought it was pretty trauma. So that's yeah. traumatic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, that's why I turned out the way I did. Blame it on, you should have got the answers from me, mom. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that's our earliest memory. Well, yeah. yeah, it was that, um, I think, you know, that trip in general is probably where I started to remember things. You know, yeah. I think we went to mm-hmm. Niagara Falls and stuff like that. So oh, I remember yeah, Mist. Remember that. I remember Mist. Yes, yeah. Yeah. the Mist. It's too big yeah. for a three-year-old to see across yeah. the bars, but I remember yeah. the Mist. No, I was yeah. a big three-year-old, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, 5'10". Yeah. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, so are you a Michigan native? Like, where'd you grow up? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was uh, our first home that I grew up partially in was in Kingsley. So, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I'm from Kingsley. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the first church that we attended and not probably not regularly was the Methodist of Kingsley. Okay. And what I remember from that is, uh, a spiral graph because like I would sit in the pews and my parents would give me something to do so that I, you know, obviously didn't cause any scene, not that I would, hmm. but but I, that's one thing that I remember was, you know, doing the spiral graph the whole time and doing those fun designs and stuff like that with different mm. color ink and everything like that. That's about, you know, it, but I don't even remember part of the youth program if there was one. I, mm. You know, they may not have had that. And I don't remember that because um, um, that just wasn't there. I don't, like I said, I don't think we went very regularly, but. Got it. You know. That's, so like a, as a kid, like what are you into? Was it immediately sports? Or um, was sports more of a hey? There's a big kid. Yeah, <laughs> let's. Which which yeah, I, I'm yeah. which I'm not saying that to be funny. I mean, it's yeah. like you pigeonhole like you see a tall right. guy in the air, airport. Yeah. You play basketball. It's like yeah, he's right. heard that a million times. Sure. No, he plays yeah. bass. <laughs> yeah. You right. Know, but yeah, I, I was joked well, that I was water polo is what I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but uh, um, yeah, I think um, my mom was very athletic. My my dad too. Um, in a different way. And, you know, I know that you've not met my dad, but he's six foot and 175 pounds. So he's not like, we aren't physically alike, right. you know? Um, my mom was 5'11". So, you know, that side of the family is where I got the, the height from. Um, but she was, uh, you know, she played, um, uh, she played basketball and softball and those types of sports. My dad was like a cross country runner and mm-hmm. he was, you know, loved to, to cycle and, um, those are the types of things that he did. And, and I really don't fall into the endurance category. Gotcha. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, that's not, <laughs> that really doesn't, speed isn't my best thing. So, um, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't really, I didn't gravitate towards his, his likes as much. Mm-hmm. Um, but my mom played basketball and, uh, she, I think she was the first, uh, athlete to go out of Kingsley. I might, I could be wrong with this. At least the first female athlete, she went to Eastern Michigan Mm. Uh, to play basketball. Now she only stayed for like a year and then came home. But um, I think she was one of the first athletes to ever go wow. ki- go from Kingsley to That's college cool. to play bas- to, to a sport. So, do you have siblings? Do you have brothers, sister? I have a, a sister who's eight years younger than I am, Mary. Um, and uh, you know that was interesting too. Um, you know, obviously being eight years apart, mm-hmm. um, we were at different stages in our life. You know, throughout most of it. So you know, growing up. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't there for her high school because I was obviously an adult at that time and, you know, moved away and down living in Florida, but, you know, we'll get there. But, um, yeah, I mean, so I do have a sibling, but, you know, for, for me, uh, early on, yeah, sports was a part of that. And I think baseball was actually the sport that I liked the most, um, you know, back then, um, 
and, you know, baseball cards and, you know, yeah. I love to, to, to collect that kind of stuff. And so I really got into that when I was, uh, you know, in my younger years. So you're like a Tigers fan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my favorite baseball player was Cecil Fielder. Yes. Um, you know, that was... That's uh, my wife's favorite, one of her favorites. Yeah. She was always, when I met her yeah. in college, like, I'm like, who's this woman? She likes baseball. And it was yeah. all the Tigers, and he was one of them yeah. all the time. Cecil Fielder, never heard of him? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I, I I definitely enjoyed that. Um, my my dad, well, my grandpa from my dad's side, he was always very encouraging of all those types of things. So, um, and... Uh, so yeah, that was, that consumed me a lot when I was a kid. Like I just loved baseball, but played, you know, I'd, I'd go out back and just throw the ball up in there and hit it, you know, over and over again, pretend to be in the, the ninth, like all kids, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, pretend it's the sure. ninth inning, you know, two outs, yeah. you know, and you gotta, you gotta make that hit and just hit the ball into the trees and, you know, mm-hmm. kind of do that type of thing. So. so you're like playing shadow baseball in your backyard by oh, yourself. Yeah. 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 By Introvert myself. guy. Yeah. 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 You're running the first. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I did the same thing. People don't think I'm an introvert. I yeah. did it with a soccer ball. Sorry. Yeah. No, yeah. That, yeah. Hey, a lot of hand-eye coordination from, you know, back then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I had friends and everything like that, but we lived in the country when I was doing that type of thing. So, yeah. you know, it wasn't, I could just go around the corner, you yeah. know, to, to meet up with some buddies, but. So where did, uh, where did you first get pressed, drafted, whatever into football? Uh, um, I, that was much later on. Um, and actually probably through high school, I would say football was my third best sport, if you believe mm-hmm. that or not. Really? Like, yeah, it was, it wasn't the, I, you know, I was, I had a lot of potential and I was good. I mean, don't, mm-hmm. you know, don't get me wrong, but I think, uh, you know, uh, when I was, when I was a kid, we went to, uh, I was six years old, we moved away from Kingsley down to Mount Pleasant. Okay. And so. Um, a, a different place altogether, uh, different school. Um, and so I, I went to the, uh, vowels elementary school for a couple of years, which we rented, rented a place that was close by. Um, I could walk to school and, you know, made some friends there. Um, and, uh, loved playground football, you know, mm-hmm. just all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. Like that was fun, you know, and just running around and. Uh, I always had good hands, so, you know, that was a, that was a benefit, uh, when you're a kid, uh, cause you know, guys want to be on your team cause you can catch. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. um, that's, that's kind of where I guess I started with interest into football. Um, and uh, you know, growing up at that time, Barry Sanders, I wanted to be mm-hmm. Barry Sanders mm-hmm. and you know, that was, uh, you know, same the, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, the likeness is uncanny. <laughs> Best running back of all time. Yeah. 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 It was completely the same at, type of athlete. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sarcasm is as thick uh, as the calories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, he was a legend. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I went to, to Vowles Elementary for a few years and then in Mount Pleasant, there was a teacher strike and, um, it went on for after the school year started and it was, you know, going on for a while. And my mom finally had enough and she took me out of that school and put me in Sacred Heart Academy. Mm. Uh, in Catholic Pleasant, school. A Catholic school. Yeah. And, and we weren't Catholic. I was baptized Methodist when I was, you know, in Kingsley. Um, and, uh, but my dad was Catholic, um, but we had never gone to, you know, Catholic sermon or mass or anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, and it was kind of a, just a, a new thing. I, I went there, was not Catholic. And so a little bit of an outsider, um, mm-hmm. we had to go to mass on Wednesdays and then we were kind of as a family expected to go on Sundays too. So, you know, we did, we went to mass, um, on a consistent basis during that, those years. Uh, and how, how old are you at this time? Um, it was fourth grade. So okay. what was that like eight? Yeah. Nine? Yeah. Eight, eight or nine. Yeah. yeah eight or nine. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and obviously new group of kids, you know, it's one of those things, you know, people that move around. Um, but you know, coming into that, there was like two kids in the class that weren't Catholic. And so what I remember from that is we'd go to, go to mass and everybody at that time had already gone through their, you know, first communion and, mm-hmm. and everything. So all my classmates would get up and they would go take communion because, you know, they did that at every mass. Um, and we had to sit there and, you know, kind of watch them and just, mm. you know, mm. that was. Hadn't been through the catechism. Yeah. 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 So didn't take those types of classes, never really felt the need to. Um, I, I, I guess I would have considered myself like a believer, 
but you know, still just an outsider, not really yeah. observing. Um, obviously taking in, you know, the sermons and, you know, uh, obviously there's the singing and, you know, the different things that take place in a, a Catholic right. mass. Um, and, and believing that God is there, but almost out of reach, mm. you know, like not, I wasn't good enough because I didn't do the things that I was supposed to do. Like that, a relationship was out of the question. And you're excluded mm. from the thing they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and every week reminded of that, mm. you know, and, and more often than not, it, I wasn't treated differently by my classmates, but there were times, mm. you know, there was times I was, I was bullied a little bit, you know, um, believe it or not, uh, but uh, yeah, it was impossible. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's not all physical bullying. I yeah, yeah, right. But so there was a little bit of that, and and I don't really have a, you know a negative, um, you know memories around that. I think a lot of kids get bullied, and it you know you grow from it. You learn how to get thick skin, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, you know, there's uh, some good that can come from that. I guess you know from that perspective, like mm-hmm. you know, just being able to you know take. Uh, criticism in some ways and be able to move on. Um, and, but, but, you know, there was times where I, you know, I would be crying after lunch or, um, I'd come home and, and, and be struggling. So, you know, I dealt with that a little bit as a kid being an outsider, mm-hmm. you know, kind of going through adolescence at that time, because that was, that was between fourth and eighth grade. So obviously, you know, a so very, you were four years yeah. at Sacred Heart, four years at Sacred Heart. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, uh, so that that was kind of my introduction to uh, you know when you're starting to to form and 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 get an idea of um you know the world around you and and starting to have understandings of things that was kind of my perspective about church yeah you know it's it's a catholic mass this is the way things go there's a certain i mean every mass is formatted the same right you know and uh you know the, the hymns the the different rites i don't, I, I can't even remember what they're called but yeah. You know, those, that process was always the same. And so that's just what it was. You know, it was something holy about that. Um, I don't know what half of it meant, hmm. but you know, there was, there was something, something there. Yeah. So like when they start talking, like in a sermon, you're really not tracking. It sounds good, yeah. but it, it's like, well, it, so like one was of the, there Bible class at all? Was there oh, anything like actually, that? Actually, yes. I mean, yeah. there was, uh, as the Catholic school, we did have a Bible class. Okay. And so there was some, I don't remember a lot of it. Right. Um, but, um, so there was, there was that class, um, and, um, the, but the sermons were so short, you know, the actual talking about what's in the Bible, you know, they, I mean, it, five, 10 minutes in a mass and an hour mass, you know what I mean? <laughs> Why is Adam looking at me right now? What? No reason, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, nothing. I've heard you preach a minute too, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> this guy. Yeah. This guy right over here. Well, so, I mean, uh, and, and that's the thing. It's <laughs> more calories. <laughs> uh, I mean, that was different. The first time I'd actually gone to a sermon, out, or, you know, mm-hmm. to uh, a church outside of that, you yeah. know, was, um, was, was different. It would have actually more of, of that. And I liked that, you mm-hmm. know. So just, uh, just being able to learn a little bit more. It, it more educational i guess right you know what happened after eighth grade like did you come back to kingsley or yeah. was there another stop on this yeah train? so my dad ended up getting a job back up here he he had worked in uh or he was working in the oil field uh so in in traverse city at the time before we moved down uh he worked for Schlumberger, uh, which is an oil field tool or oil field business um and they moved the shop down to mount pleasant that's what took us down there um he ended up getting an offer from a a, a a uh, small company up here in Traverse City and decided that we we're going to move back. And so we moved back uh, to Kingsley. Um, and, uh, you know, for, so that was going into ninth grade year. So high school, I, you know, was a, a Kingsley student. So did you, from the church perspective, now you're out of the Catholic environment, you're back in the public school. Yeah. Does that, did you still feel like an outsider though? Because you're the new kid again. Well, sure. I mean, I you mean, used to live here. Yeah. You probably know some faces, but. You know, it's funny because the the, there's a lot of people that did remember me and I didn't have any idea who they were. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, it's because you went this way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was, apparently I had a girlfriend. Yeah, I don't remember ever having any girlfriend when I was in <laughs> first grade, you know. Ah, <laughs> you know? Funny. But. Uh, but, but you're a big ninth grader. Like yeah. How, like how tall are you? I don't want to make this all about how tall no. you are. But. I, uh, I was probably, 
it's hard. I, I, I try to remember this because, you know, Landon's getting, yeah. you know, he's an eighth grader now. So he, he try to remember where those, those, uh, you know, measurements were, but, um, I, it's six, two to six, three in ninth grade, in ninth grade, wow. probably, yeah. you yeah. know, um, you know, probably 190 to 200 pounds or something like that. Um, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit thicker, I, you know, I, uh, I wasn't real skinny by any, by any stretch, but. You're just a big dude and you're showing up and you love baseball. You, yeah. you had mentioned three sports yeah. and you said football was your third. So I'm assuming it was baseball, basketball. Yeah. That's, or those were did those... you throw in track or something like that? No, I know. I, it was baseball yeah. and basketball. You yeah. know, those were, and actually my favorite sport, you know, in high school was basketball. Yeah. Like I just loved playing that sport. It, I, um, really good hand-eye coordination and my mom, she was. Uh, a post player. And so she would teach me, you know, post wow, moves. That's cool. You know, I can always remember <laughs> the one thing that everybody knew when I didn't use the backboard because my mom was yelling in the stands that I needed to use the backboard. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was yeah. that, it was box out. Use the board. I, you know, yeah. you could always hear her, you know, yeah. from the crowd. <laughs> so, um, but you know, that, that was good. I mean, I'd, uh, a good reminder on, you know, how I should be playing the game, you know. Were you playing team sports and Mount Pleasant? Yeah. At that point? Well, sure. So, um, there was, you know, there's flag football when you're, you know, a lo- lot younger. Uh, there was little league baseball and I, and I was really good, uh, played on the all-star team and Mount Pleasant actually, you know, was known for baseball a lot. You know, they had some really, I think a couple years before I went through, they had gone to the national world series or whatever for little league. Um, and, uh, so baseball was a big sport in Mount Pleasant and I, and I fit in, it worked well for me cause I loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then towards when I got to sacred heart, it became more basketball. Um, now I wasn't one of the dudes like, you know, mm-hmm. wasn't one of the favorites. Um, and I was a big guy. Um, so I, I didn't get fed, you know, as, as they say. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to make a lot of, uh, a lot of my own, uh, baskets and stuff like that, but, uh, really grew and, and, and enjoyed it. Like I loved playing basketball at that time. And then I think it was seventh and eighth grade is when I put on a helmet for the first time, you know, mm-hmm. um, cause they had rocket, they didn't have P, uh, uh, pop Warner, uh, down in Mount Pleasant. So, um, it was middle school football is when I first really started to play. I mean, played flag football before that, but obviously that's not the same. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So in Kingsley, you just picked up where you left off and jumped on all the teams. Yeah. So, uh, the first summer I, um, when we were moving, um, I played baseball. I had, I was in the league in Mount Pleasant and the A league in in Kingsley. And so I played like three times, like three leagues that summer. Um, and this was before travel ball, baseball became Mm -hmm. a real big thing. So I was getting, I was playing a lot. Uh, obviously met some kids, you know, when I, when I played that ball, which was good, um, you know, to, to start being able to recognize the people. So the first day of school wasn't the first time I met somebody right? right. and going through that process. So I was, was lucky that way in it and, and, and being, uh, somewhat of a gifted athlete, I guess is easier to make friends that way too. And especially yeah. because I didn't have that baggage of being different, um, yeah. of being an outsider, you know, um, now I was just, just another kid, you know, somebody that came and. Yeah. From another school and, you know, but was good at what I wanted to do. So that very first year, ninth grade, you get picked up for football? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, I played, uh, football on the JV. Um, I ended up playing varsity baseball and, you know, got bumped up at, for, uh, playoffs and basketball, um, which, I mean, that was just more of a developmental thing just yeah. to come along. Um, but, but I, yeah, I played, uh, I, I can't remember what they called it, but I played on the JV and varsity for a lot of games. Um, but, but, you know, more on varsity played first base and, uh, it was a pretty good hitter. So, you know, I, I, and, and that was a good senior class too. They had a lot of really good athletes. So I, I was fortunate. I think I was the only freshman to hmm. get, get moved up, um, uh, for that baseball season. So, so I've seen picks just, we won't jump too far ahead. We've both seen picks of Tom playing <laughs> professional football. Mm-hmm. He's a freaking unit. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's, he's a giant. I mean, the one was from arena football where you're coming yeah. mm-hmm. in a hurry and you're carrying the ball. Yeah. We'll t- you yeah. can tell us about that pick. But all of a sudden I have this picture of Tom, uh, like over the plate. I bet you this guy went yard <laughs> more than one. Like when you got yeah. a hold of one, 
Uh, yeah, were you I, a big hitter? I I mean I I had my fair share. Is that um, ball still going? <laughs> <laughs> Hitting dingers. You know the, the 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 funny thing is though I I was uh, I was known more for just being uh, like I you couldn't get me out like mm-hmm. if it got to got two strikes on me I was going to put the ball in play oh, you know what I mean that's cool like Pete I Rose, a, Charlie yeah, Hustle. yeah yeah I had a really good I had an over five hundred batting average uh, you know uh, on varsity. Uh, by the end of my senior year, and you know, it was. Wow. I didn't feel it's possible. Yeah, it was, I mean, there's. I'm pretty sure there's kids that you know can do that because it. I guess it depends on the competition, yeah. obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. and pitching, and. But um, there's been some really good baseball players to come through. You know, all the schools, and I'm sure that there's some good ones. But. Um. But yeah, I, I mean, I was I was pretty good there. I I ended up pitching as well, and that was fun. I really loved to pitch, and I didn't have the. The, the most speed on my arm, but I was a very intimidating thing. I was going to say, I couldn't imagine doing <laughs> that bad <in> box. <laughs> Just Adam, shaking. I, hey, Adam, you going to charge that mound ever? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, no. no. Uh, and, and being the size school, you know, there was a lot of freshmen, you know, and sophomores that would play on, on teams and stuff like that. But so my senior year, I, I loved, you know, being a little bit high and tight on that first freshman mm. that stepped up to the plate just to kind of set the <laughs> right tone and, the you know, see him dive out of there just because yeah. they were so intimidated. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I, I like yeah. that smile. Yeah. So when you moved back to Kingsley, mm-hmm. did you stay engaged with the Catholic church? Did you go back to the Methodist church? Like where did, where did, like, where was faith coming into high school you know, and all that kind of stuff? It wasn't. Okay. I mean, the reality is we just kind of left it behind in Mount Pleasant. Um, I didn't, I, I, you know, I considered myself a believer. I think my, my family always considered themselves believers, but we didn't actively pursue it and, and try to get. And so for me, it became like, I'm fine with it out of sight, out of mind. I wasn't a part of it. I didn't know what it meant, mm. you know, to have a relationship or to, to, to actually go do those things. And I, I mean, the Catholic, like I, I saw that masses, this is the way it's done, but I'm not a part of that. So I'm not going to ask to go, you know, right, <laughs> you right. know I don't, Hey, Hey, yeah. Can we go and can we go find the church? You know, we you know I miss that. I miss. Can we dress up and sit in a hot place and not know what's going <laughs> yeah. on for an hour on Sunday yeah. morning? Yeah, yeah. So I, I basically, you know, it was I, I didn't have a relationship. I, did, mm-hmm. I didn't. We didn't go to church. Um, I think I, I, I met Tracy um, my junior year, um, and we started dating then. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a few times where they invited me to go along with them to the Baptist church. Okay. Um, so, you and know, she's in Kingsley too. She's in Kingsley yeah. as well. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, uh, so I went along with them a few times. Um, but I'll be honest, I wasn't that big of a fan of the Baptist, uh, sermon either. You know, it was, it seemed a little bit, um, the rules seemed a little bit more strict than I <laughs> was, was enthused about, you know? Mm-hmm. So I didn't really want to, you know, pursue that either. I just would go when I was asked to go. But I like my girl. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Exactly. it's amazing what it'll do to yeah. do when there's girls involved. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, was Tracy, true. uh, was she raised in the Baptist church? She she and her family is pretty strong or no? Not entirely. Actually, uh she has more of a Methodist background as well. Okay. Um and uh um I don't entirely I, I know because we talked about it a little bit, but um, where in the time frame? I know they ended up moving, uh, to Kingsley from, uh, I'm sorry, from Traverse city, um, when she was in junior high. And I, I have a feeling that that's when their shift, okay. you know, to, to the Baptist church. Um, I don't know what was going on in the Methodist church here at the time, but, right. um, but that's kind of the, they went there. But would it be accurate to say her family was a little bit more consistent than yours as far yeah. as finding a church? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think she went to youth group, which I never did. Um, uh, you know, some of my buddies, they asked me to go. I didn't really want to. Mm. Um, I just felt like I'd be an outsider again. You know, like mm. it just wasn't for me. I, you know, that's, that's not my, not my, my place. Right. Yeah. So through high school still feel, Hey, I'm a believer. I believe whatever this God is. Yeah. We're good not really into the pursuing it yeah. because, and I'm feeling the thing or I'm hearing the theme, always feeling like an outsider. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Feeling like that there's an in club. I'm not in the in club with the Catholics. Right. I don't want to be the in club with the Baptists. <laughs> no offense to the Baptists. We love Baptists, yeah. whatever. Um, Methodist. And yeah. meanwhile, uh, sports has taken off. Oh yeah. That, that became my religion. Yeah. When did it really click? Like, 
like because I know a little bit not yeah. to the level, but similar. Um, not in three sports. I was a one sport guy, mm-hmm. but there was definitely a moment when I remember the praise yeah. and the affirmation. Sure. And this is where I'm the most insider. I'm yeah. the innermost layer of yeah. this, and now I'm the gatekeeper. Right. That's when it became my religion. Yeah. Probably about tenth grade. Yeah. Tenth or eleventh grade for I, me. I think that's accurate because at that time, you know, I was. As I mentioned, like I, I got moved up to varsity baseball. I, I played a little bit of, on the varsity as a freshman uh, basketball team. And it was in 10th grade that I got moved up to varsity uh, football and I was full-time varsity basketball, full-time varsity baseball. And so I was kind of the dude, you yeah. know, I became yep. that guy, you know, the the up and coming stud um, athlete in the school. Um, yeah, still sophomore. Obviously there's seniors and stuff like that that are more popular than me at that point. And better athletes, um, but you know the writing was on the wall. This, you know, this is my path, yeah. and this is my yeah. path to popularity. This is my path to be what everybody else wants me to be. You yeah. know, yeah. this is where I get the affirmation. Yeah. This is where people are saying this is what sure. I was made to be. And yeah. and I and I and I worked hard. You know, I, like I I realized early, and this is something that my mom always instilled in me was, you know, to practice. So I was always shooting baskets. You know, where when I could, uh, and and not just goofing around. I would work on post moves and, you know, do those types of things, the things that, you know, she taught me to do. Um, and, uh, you know, baseball was always there. I was starting to, you know, move away from that as a favorite. So I didn't spend as much time, uh, hitting baseballs in the backyard, you know, that type of thing. But, um, and obviously interests were changing as well. I mean, you know, girls, you know, (laughs) you know, Tracy came into my life and, um, you know, just a little side note there, you know, the, the, the first memory I ever ha- have of seeing her was sophomore year, uh, halftime. We were probably getting our butts kicked because we did that year a lot. Um, <laughs> but she was the drum major. And I remember looking at halftime, we were over by like a dugout or something like that by the football field. And I remember looking and I'm like, oh, she's kind of cute. <laughs> <And I> was, <laughs> who's that drum this major? This game is over, but <laughs> yeah. who's that blonde yeah. chick? Yeah. I bet you she can make some trace cakes. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So that was, that was the first time, you know, and I, and I, did, I don't think I put that together until mm-hmm. much later that that was her, but, mm-hmm. um, but I, that was my first time rem- I remember seeing her, you know, uh, in that way. So, um, but, but yeah, I mean, that was sports was, was it like I, I, I put all, all of my energy into that. I was, a, I was a good student. You know, I, I didn't have any issues in the classroom. Um, and, uh, and, and was well liked. I, I, you know, I, I kind of lived like, you know, a, 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 you could say a goody two shoes, right? So like, I was not a cocky, arrogant guy. At least I didn't think I was, you know, maybe there might be others that think I was, that uh, I have a different opinion of me on the, at that time, but Um, I always tried to be nice to everybody, you know, tried to do the right thing. Um, I was never a bully. At least I didn't think so, you know, make fun of anybody. I, I, I had, you know, some empathy for the kids that got bullied, you know, so I was a good guy and you know, that's, that's kind of what, what I thought I needed to be, to be a Christian, just, you know, Mm -hmm. just a good person. You know, that was going to be the model student athlete. Yeah. Don't get in trouble. Don't get suspended. Yeah. Team needs me. Yeah. I wasn't going to go to a party like, you know. And later on, it became more evident that I was going to have an opportunity to, to continue to play sports after high school. And, and that's kind of where football became more of a concentration is that I was a really good bas- basketball player. I loved it. But, you know, I, I you know, topped out at six foot six um, and I was, uh, you know, bigger. I, you know, could jump okay, but, you know, I by no means was, you know, uh, uh, you know, could, could jump, you know, super high and, and, and on a consistent basis. So, um, that was, um, it it became apparent that my, my path might be with football Mm. and that's kind of ceiling at the next level in basketball, but not with football. Right. Yes. I, you know, and I think I got scouted, um, in, in basketball a little bit, like some D2, but I don't know if I would have gotten an offer or not, but, um, the, uh, but Tim came, Tim were, came to Kingsley my junior year and that's where things changed. I mean, our, our sophomore year, we went one and one and seven. Um, and, uh, and then Tim came to Kingsley my, my junior year and the energy around the football program changed. And, oh, it's palpable. Yeah. I've I had mean, the privilege to be out there. 
on many yeah. occasion, and oh. that's a well-run program. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, exactly, and and I mean, brought strength training to the to the equation, you know, in the off season. Um, a standard, there's standards. Much here, more boys. of a standard, yeah. 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 Um, and it, it just like there was a lot more energy around it in my in the school, uh, like classmates. You know, we went from having I w- I got moved up to varsity, and we may have had sixteen or seventeen. To I think my junior year, we probably had close to thirty kids. Wow. You know, so a lot, a lot more. Uh, you know, my class was actually a. Um, we had a, a number of good athletes in our in our cl- in that class, so. Um, it, it worked out well, but we went from one and seven to seven and three and made the, f- the playoffs for the first time in school history. Um, that was a big deal. I was playing tight end, um, which I really enjoyed because I got the opportunity to catch, catch the, the ball, ball every yeah, now and again. Yeah. Um, and, uh, um, but yeah, and that offense is definitely not pass heavy, obviously. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, but you know, that's, that's kind of, I saw that as to be my path. And so, you know, obviously you spent a lot of time and a lot of energy in, in, in the workouts and, um, in, in just, you know, trying to get myself better to, you know, maybe have an opportunity. Hmm. Yeah. What, when did you, did, was, was it somebody that said like, Hey, there's a future in this for you or did, how did you realize that? Uh, well, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if it was, you know, said to me initially, but scouts from colleges started you know, inquiring. Mm. And so I got a few phone calls. I got invited to a camp or two. Um, and, uh, that's when I realized like, oh yeah, this, this is, this is probably the, the best bet. And so, um, that's, that's kind of, it's a lot different now than it was then because now there's all kinds of different resources that these right. kids have right. to get in, you know, their film out. And I can't even imagine what it would, it would be like trying to do that. Um, but, um, it just, yeah, it just kind of, you know, word spread, I guess, you know, that there's the, well, there's me and there was another, uh, another kid in my class, uh, uh another mountain of a man, uh, Dave Bott, uh, who was, I know a, Dave Bott. <laughs> who was <Yeah>. a phenomenal <laughs> athlete as well. And, you know, he had, you know, it was the, the two of us were getting, you know, looked at mm-hmm. and, and so it was, I, I, I love that part of it. You know, it was fun. Got to go on, you know, college visits and stuff like mm-hmm. that you know, be, between junior and senior year and, uh, oh, actually senior year too, I think is how that worked. But, um, so that was, it was kind of a cool thing. Um, and exciting, you yeah. know, was, was Tracy on board as well? Cause you guys are dating at yeah. that point of like, Hey, like this is she like, was she, yeah. does she want you to do that athletic thing as well? I think so. I mean, that's, that's what we, we knew like, yeah. they're like, you know, she knew me. That's, that's what I did. Right. So, and, and that was a major part of my identity. So I, I, you know, it was just kind of a natural thing, just flows. Yeah. I don't think that at that age we were smart enough to have any conversation about like, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, what that future was going to look like, but, yeah. uh, and she was a year behind me. So, okay. you know, she was, so yeah, she was a sophomore and I was a junior when we started actually dating. Um, okay. but, uh, um, but so she, you know, supported me obviously, uh, as a, as you know, my lead cheerleader, as far as that's concerned, uh, you know, uh, so that was, uh, that was high school. Yeah. So how did the team do your senior year? Uh, we went, uh, I think it was 10 and two. We went to the super dome, uh, the superior dome, um, regional, I think it was the regional final or something like that. It was again, uh, you know, obviously much further than we had gone, you know, yeah. in school history. At that point, too, we beat like Frankfurt. That was a big deal because Kingsley football had never beat Frankfurt before. We mm-hmm. beat them that mm-hmm. year, and um, and I just remember it was a cool night because um, a lot of the you know uh, the people that uh, alumni mm-hmm. were just that was a very emotional night for them to see that. You know, wow. mm-hmm. yeah, it was cool, and uh, you know I caught a touchdown in the end zone at at the end of the half, and I mean it was just people lined all the way in the end zones. Um, and just the excitement around that was, was really cool. I mean, and it's it just like, feeding this. Oh, this yeah. is who I am. Yeah. This is what I've made to do. Yeah. I'm no longer an outsider. I'm an right. insider. Right. Everybody looks at me, you know, yeah. they, they, they want to get close to me. You know, that was, yeah. that was kind of, you know, the way it was. I liked it. <laughs> you know, it was, it was, uh, it was exciting. So off to college. Mm-hmm. That's next, right? Yeah. So, uh, Eastern Michigan, um, you know, I got a couple offers to play D2, which, uh, would have been, 
partial scholarships. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eastern was the only Division One school that offered me a full ride, and I was like, I don't have to pay to go to college. Mm-hmm. Free money, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, so smart man. And not only that, they. Like it was between that and Central. Central ended up not offering me a scholarship, but they wanted me to move to offensive line. And at that time, I was like, I still want to play tight end, you know. And he, uh, the Eastern said, like, well, well, you can play tight end here. I think they always knew that I was going to move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but they were going to tell, yeah, yeah, they were going to tell me what I wanted to hear. And and so yeah, that 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 was when. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was the first full ride ath- athletic scholarship out of out of Kingsley, um, mm. which still might be the only one. Which there's a lot of really good athletes that have come through there, mm. but um, but that was that was another big deal, you know, being that that first yeah. guy yeah. to to get the opportunity to play uh, Division One uh, a Division One sport um, and get you know a full ride for it. So um, again, feeding into that ego, yeah. you know, like you're the man, you know, yeah. this is you're invincible. You can do anything, you know, mm-hmm. that was, that was kind of the mindset. And a lot of kids have that, yeah. you know, you don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. what mortality looks like. You don't have yeah. a perspective on life. You haven't hit that ceiling yet. No, no, but, uh, sky's the limit. You know, I'm the man, you yeah. know, that was, so that what, was what was that transition like though? Cause I'm sure it's gotta be a lot different. Like you're the star player yeah. on the high school team. Then you go to college where yeah. everybody was the star player on their high school yeah. team, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Really. It, it was. Now, I, you know, I was, when I, uh, I was, a, again, a tight end, um, and I was six foot six, about 270 pounds when I checked in, which is a big tight end, right? Um, but I, I knew how to play, I knew how to play ball. And, and so my freshman year, you know, at the beginning of the year, I was getting reps. I, uh, I did not met, uh, get my, uh, I did not redshirt. Um, I, I was, was playing right away. I wasn't starting. Um, but each week it seemed like I was getting more and more of a role mm-hmm. as I developed because obviously the, the, the competition level is, is way different yeah. than it was before. And yeah, you're right. I was not, I was not the, uh, the dude anymore. Uh, but I was, I was definitely good enough to get looked at as far as like this guy can help the team and he's going to get a lot better. You mm-hmm. know, there was a lot of potential in what I had, uh, to work with. So they, they continue to do that. Um, uh, feed me, uh, give me a more and more role from week to week. Uh, and that lasted about four weeks. Um, and, uh, you know, life changed right about then. Um, for, for a little while, like, I, I mean, the weight program, I was, I was feeling great. I was doing a bunch of different, I was like growing, um, shoot, I had abs at the time. Like I was, mm-hmm. I was looking good if you ask me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but in, 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 and I was big, I mean, I was just, you know, a brick house, mm-hmm. but something was wrong. Um, and I knew at that time something was wrong, but I was ignoring it. And, uh, about four weeks into the season, um, I just said, you know, I'm going to get checked out. You know, I, I didn't go to the training staff. I was a little embarrassed, you know, to be like, this is probably nothing, hmm. you know, I, I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, you know, it, you know, it'll be embarrassing when it becomes nothing hmm. and everything like that. So on Mondays we had that day off after the game or well, Sunday we, we worked out and we had a, uh, maybe a short practice. Um, cause Saturdays were game days, obviously. Um, Mondays we had off. And so Monday I went to like right around the corner from the school was, uh, St. Uh, St. Joe's, I think. Um, and I just went to the urgent care and was just like, Hey, you know, I've been dealing with this, you know, what could this be? And it was, it was pretty quick that they, they put me in some tests and, um, you know, it was, then they put me in contact, um, with actually a, a regional guy, uh, a, a cancer specialist, um, who, who basically at that time told me that, you know, that day you have cancer, mm. you know, um, which for a guy that is invincible, mm-hmm. you know, the man like gonna, like the sky's the limit. It's like hitting you in the brick face, you know, in the face with a brick, mm-hmm. um, and just saying like, hold up, wait a minute, you yeah. know, yeah. um, that was freshman a year of college and freshman year of college. I'm 18 years old. 
uh, pretty much on my own. Um, obviously, you know, we're in the dorms and stuff like that. And, you know, in a three hour span, I go from like, you're, you're going to get more reps. You're going to, you know, uh, more and more and, uh, to don't know if you're going to play football anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I went from the hospital. They said, we're going to, you're going to be in surgery tomorrow. We're going to put you in that quick to get the, the tumor out. And, um, so that. I knew at least my season was over mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, and I had no idea what was going to happen after that. Right. Like it just like no clue where, where things were going to go. Um, uh, the different testing that's going to have to go, go, take place. The, uh, you know, uh, what kind of treatments that I'm going to have to receive, you know, what is this going to mean? And he said, like the surgeon said, like, yeah, we got to get out. Um, I mean, I'm the, I'm kind of an expert in this field and, um, I'm the guy in the area, the region and, you know, I 99.9% .9 sure you have cancer, you know? And, uh, so from there, um, I went to, uh, the training room to the, the convocation center where all the offices were and everything like that. And I told the, the, the coaches and training staff, I'm a wreck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Um, uh, and you know, just told them what the deal was. They were a little upset at me because I didn't come to them first, mm -hmm. but they were extremely supportive. So immediately we, I, I don't even have a cell phone at this time, right? This is, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> put, put time frame in perspective. Yeah. I mean, that was, uh, 2001, nine 11 had just happened, yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, and, uh, uh, I, uh, so they, you know, helped me call my parents. My parents came down that night, they put us up in a hotel and, uh, you know, we're going to kind of take, take, make sure that I was taken care of in the meantime, to, you know, before, as we find out more, you know, what's, what's going to happen. So, um, and, and I, I just remember, um, you know, at one point I was in my dorm room, my, my roommate came in and I'm just, I'm just a hot mess. You know, he did, I mean, he didn't know it <laughs> and there was a big cultural difference there too, because they thought that I would be a good influence on this, this young man that was, you know, from South Florida, uh, dreadlocks, gold teeth, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't understand a word he said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, but they thought that I would be a good influence on him. So he was my roommate, but just like him, like dog, like, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to say, you know, it's just the, you know, faced with saying, you know, that's nowhere near anybody's mind. Right. Right. You know, nobody knows what to do at that age. Um, but yeah, so my parents came down and they put us up in a hotel. Um, and that night, um, you know, I was a wreck laying in bed, couldn't sleep. Um, just, you know, bawling my eyes out because everything that I had looked at, my future was probably gone as far mm -hmm. as I knew, like maybe not, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. Treatments are going to go well and, you know, I'll be able to recover. I, I really don't know what it means at this point because uh, we haven't gotten there. Uh, you know, we haven't gotten that far with it. Um, and, and at that point, I, I do remember, is probably one of the actual first prayers that I had um, directly, not a Hail Mary, you know, not an Our Father, but an actual prayer to God. Um, and I was asking the things that, you know, we were you're told not to ask, you know, why, <laughs> you know, why is this happening? Of course. Um, uh, but, um, I, I just distinctly remember, um, peace. Peace at that time, like just washed over me and I knew I was going to be fine. <sighs> I don't know how to describe it other than just like that feeling washing over you as far as, you know, each, I just knew I was reassured in a way that I didn't, I mean, I just, there's a, a distinct difference between before the prayer to after the prayer. Like I was calm. I was, I, I wasn't a wreck anymore. I was wow. like, I'm going to be good. Hmm. I'm going to be good. I knew I was going to be good. So. Didn't hear a voice. 
I can't say that. No. No shining light. No. No earthquake. No. No, just, just peace. Like just immediate you know, at ease. Yeah. You know, and well, I knew what it was, you know, I knew who it was. I didn't know why, yeah. you know, I didn't know what it meant other than I knew that I was reassured that I was going to be fine. Yeah. You know, that's the only thing that I, I knew like that mm-hmm. after that. Um, so, uh, the next day going to the surgery, they removed the tumor. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay to do, I, I, I can't, there's no working out. There's none of, you know, the, I, my season's done. Mm-hmm. Um, but the team was gracious enough to take me. We had to go to UConn. Uh, to play uh, the Huskies there that week. And they, they brought me along. They didn't have to. Uh, they brought me along. Um, I had, um, I remember I attended chapel with the team. Um, and, and I had gone, started going to those chapels. That was about the most extent that I had of, you know, doing anything as in the way of a Christian. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even think I had a Bible at the time or, you know, any of those types of things. But, I remember going to chapel and after chapel, um, the, uh, head trainer called me, you know, took me aside and he said, Hey, I got a phone call, uh, for you, uh, over here. And so, um, I took the phone call and, um, it was the surgeon. Um, and he's like, Tom, um, I don't know what to tell you, but, uh, that, that tumor that we pulled out of you was benign. You're going to be fine. No testing further, no treatments. Um, still season's done, but you know, because of the surgery. Yeah. But, uh, but you're going to be able to move on with the rest of your life. Like it, like this is just a blip, you know? Wow. (sighs) Bro, are you just at that point overjoyed? (laughs) Or, or are you in shock? Yeah. Overwhelmed? overwhelmed? Yeah. Like, what are you feeling? I think, I think all of it. You know? I mean, besides really, really good news. Yeah. You thinking you're the luckiest man of, <laughs> in the world? Or are you suddenly like, I am meant to be an apostle of <laughs> <Yeah>. the Lord? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and, and I don't know. I, I, uh, I, I know I, I, I thanked God yeah. for that. Um, and, uh, I, 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 you know, just, I was in shock. Obviously, like I, I was expecting to hear what, what's next, you yeah. know? Okay. So we took the tumor out, you know, these are the tests that you know, we got to go through these different treatments and we're going to have to do this, you know, that and the other thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I, there was a short conversation cause he didn't have <laughs> more to say, you know, wow. you <laughs> have fun, enjoy your life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's it. It's, we're done. What a roller coaster, man. Yeah. Yeah. So that. At that, you know, I, you know, God obviously, you know, breathed into my life and, 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 and said that I am good enough or, you know, I had to have a relationship with. Mm-hmm. Now, that being said, I'm still a stubborn, you know, teenager, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I see it for what it is, but it doesn't change me, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't change. I don't have, you know, the, the switch doesn't, doesn't just you know, click on and be like, okay, this is what I need to do. I, I didn't know what it meant that what I needed to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just know, I knew that it was, he was there, mm-hmm. you know, without a doubt and th- that he was there for me. Uh, but I still, I had no idea how, how, what to do with that, you know, and you know, we're in college, you know, it's, it's not like there's an overwhelming abundance of people that are, you know, mm-hmm. going to church and doing those things. There right, were yeah. those. Yeah. There were those. And there's a chaplain or some sort of chapel that's happened on the team. So there, yeah. there's a framework for you. There is. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it was, it was a minimal yeah. amount, you know. I, but you've I, just had this massive, yeah. like, invasion of life and death. I mean, let's call it what it is. It yeah. was a life and death experience. Yeah. Because you don't know. Yeah. And living through that, I mean, even even listening to you, those feelings are still right there. Like oh, you yeah. can go mm-hmm. right back there. And what is that? 20 years ago? Yeah. 24 years ago? Yeah. It was 2001. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. 23 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Just 23 years ago. Wow. <laughs> Man, that's been a minute. Yeah. That's been I, a minute. Yeah. How was, I mean, that had to be quite the roller coaster for Tracy as well. I mean, yeah. Because she wasn't even with you, right? She's. No. So she was, she was definitely, uh, she was still in high school at that time. Uh, she uh, didn't have too much. Uh, she, she didn't look fondly on that time because she, yeah. she wasn't in the know. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know? she didn't even know you were going into surgery. No, no. Again, I, I didn't oh. have, um, I didn't have, uh, a, uh, um, cell phone. We didn't have cell phones and stuff like that. So calls were limited. I mean, I, th- I think I had some call cards and stuff like that, but everything was such, it right. happened in such right. a blur. So fast. Yeah. That, hey, by the way, my season's over now. I almost had cancer, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> yeah. How was your weekend? <laughs> yeah. So she wasn't real happy about being on the outside of that. You know, yeah. um, she, you know, she doesn't. That's probably fair. Yeah. No, <laughs> and, and rightly so. Yeah. And I, and, and again, I was in such shock that that wasn't, For sure. wasn't on my mind. Yeah. Like I was, yeah. I was just like, what, what's going to happen? Yeah. You know, what, where, where are we going? And just everybody was, was putting me in the places that I need to be at that point. I didn't have decision. I didn't, I shouldn't be making decisions, right. you know? Right. And, uh, and so she didn't find out till afterwards, you know? And so she, uh, yeah, that was the, the point of contention, I guess. I've yeah, got so a feeling because Tracy doesn't play. <laughs> I know Tracy Khalid <laughs> yeah. and Tracy doesn't yeah. play. So I imagine that wasn't the greatest for you. No. But you guys obviously got past well, it yeah. at some point. Yeah. 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 And I think that, you know, that, w- that added a little bit of resentment uh, to, to my parents or uh, at least my mom. Mm. I mean, there was, there was, yeah, okay. Everybody, I mean, I can't um, imagine, I think probably almost every man deals with the mom and the, mm-hmm. you know, daughter-in-law, yeah. you know, relationship and everything like that. Oh, and, yes. And that didn't help later on, you know, right. it was, it was sure. definitely yeah. uh, a little bit of that divide there. Yeah. So, um, so you get this news that, okay, you're going to be able to play. Yeah. Um, still can't play that season. Right. So you just, what, what's that process like now you go from the surgery, so you're recovering, are you just yeah. like studying film? Like what are you doing yeah. to. Yeah. I, I mean, I was in meetings with the team. I was doing those types of things and, and yeah, I, I couldn't work out. I couldn't do the things that I needed to do to, to make myself better. Uh, but it was more, you know, watching stuff and, you know, being with the team and, and being in meetings and kind of doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was in that off season that when I finally got cleared and I could start working out, I think it was right at the end of the year that I finally could, you know, work out and do or the end of the season. I could start doing those things again, um, that they, they called me and were like, Hey Tom, um, we think that you should move the tackle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and the they, hammer falls. Yeah. yeah. And, and they basically said, do you know who the highest paid player, you know, the high on average, the highest paid position in the NFL is? And I said, oh, I don't know, quarterback. And he's, they're like, it's left tackle. You know, that's what they told me. A little incentive. Yeah. They said, uh, you know, you're, you're very athletic, but it's going to be hard for you to keep your weight down just because of your frame, you know, just your genetics. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're going to get bigger. You're going to continue to grow. We really think you got a future there. And so they, they convinced me to move down to tackle. I wasn't happy about it at the time. Um, but I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, spring ball came around, came, came along. I was, they, they started me at right tackle, um, at the time. And before the end of it, I was starting at left tackle. Uh, about 295 pounds going in that first season, um, starting left tackle at Eastern. Um, you know, I did, I did that for the next three years. Wow. Uh, started every game. Position didn't change. Miss a game. Position Just a change. position ch- I mean, that's a totally different game. Yeah. Well, well yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm the one talking yeah. like <laughs> yeah. I know anything about football, yeah. but from what I've learned from you, I mean, yeah. you went from a guy that's catching passes, blocking, but yeah. mostly, yep. I mean, you're looking for the chance to. Yeah catch the TD pass right. to now you're in the trenches. Yeah. I'm in the trenches. My role, obviously different, the, the chance for glory is really gone. Like now it's, you're the ultimate team player because you know, yeah. mm-hmm. this is, this is the way, you know, you, you're not going to get your, your name in lights. You're not going to sc- catch the game winning touchdown. Um, you're, you're, you're just going to grind, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to grind. And, and, and I, you know, after, a while I bought into it. I started like, there's a different mentality that linemen have. Yeah. I, I, I figured that out, you know, <laughs> I learned it. I became that guy and, um, you know, and, and, and it ended up really loving what I was doing, you know, being that. So, you know, the, the, the difficult thing, 
through those years was, you know, I, I was four years at, at Eastern, uh, and I had four different position coaches. And what I mean by that is like each year there was a new offensive line coach. coach. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Because at, at the, the level, the Mac level, those guys are, it's a stepping stone. Yeah. yeah. You know, these guys are, are there and then they're gone because they either get a better job, uh, or they get fired, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, there's just no consistency and I, and I, and I wish there's, there's one or two of those coaches but I'm like, I wish I would have had that guy the whole time because it would have made a difference. You know, maybe, maybe it would have made a difference. I don't yeah. know. But who was your head coach? Uh, the first three years, it was uh, Jeff Woodruff, uh, who's a really good man. Um, I liked him. A lot, a lot of guys didn't, um, but uh, he he groomed me a little bit in, in the way that he would talk to me, um, take me to the side and say, like, you you know, you do have a chance. You're like this is like this could be a future for you if you want it, want to do it you know playing football um you have the tools you know it's what you want to put into it and and I and I put everything I had into it you know the workouts and everything like that my senior year um it ended up being Jeff Jenick uh was was the head coach uh Woodruff got fired uh there was a carousel in, at Eastern for a long time um and we just didn't have success I learned how to lose um you know we won some games but it just, it wasn't consistent. Um, but, uh, but Jeff Jennett came in. Now the hard thing about that is, you know, as a senior, I'm not his guy, Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I've, I'm going to start. Uh, and, and, and I, I was one of the captains, you know, yeah. I, I had earned that. Um, but he's going to invest in the young but guys. But he was investing yeah, in the young guys. guys. And so, you know, the word that I got was like, when it came down to like scouts coming in and, and checking me out, because I had garnered interest. Like there were scouts coming to check me out and everything like that. He, he wasn't, he wasn't, uh, really pumping me up. Mm -hmm. Um, now that may or may not be true. Um, but, um, uh, I, I think that, you know, he was more interested in, in, in what the future looked like for Eastern, which is, you know, rightly so I get that. Um, and, and I wasn't going to be a part of that after that one year. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, so, you know, I don't know if that affected my status when I, when I graduated or I was done. Um, but that's just the way things went. Um, my senior year, you know, we won a few more games, but, um, you know, and I was still getting interest. Right. So, uh, afterwards I signed with a, with a, with an agent, um, and started that process of getting ready for the draft and, uh, pro day and, you know, all those different types of things. So, so for the next three years of college yeah. after the cancer, yeah. You went to the coaches. Yeah. Did Tracy follow you to Eastern? She did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eastern's a really good teaching school, and that's what she wanted to do. I think she want, also was interested in Grand Valley. I think I influenced her maybe a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Uh, and Not a bully, just an influence. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and, and she went down to Eastern as well. So, you know, nice. then. Um, so obviously our relationship was, you know, still, still going through high school, know, sweethearts. Yeah, our high school. I think sweethearts. I knew that, but yeah. I didn't. Yeah. Now faith is still, would you say faith is still kind of where it was similar to where yeah. the yeah. team was? There was a couple wins. Yeah. Like, like now I'm, I'm, I'm looking back in hindsight mm -hmm. is God has definitely got you on a journey. Yeah. And you're definitely seeing those highlights. Yeah. Um, but it's still, it's really young on that yeah, journey, man. Yeah. I, you know, like Sundays are for sleeping and yeah, for doing homework yeah, and goofing was, around. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously after games, you'd go out, you have fun, have some drinks and do all those types of things. And, you know, you might be sleeping off a hangover. We got meetings at, in the early afternoon and, you know, kind of doing that thing. I do remember one or two guys asked me to go to church with them. Uh, but I said, no, um, no, thank you. Um, I, I continue to go to the chapel and those types of things, but, right. you know, and that was, that was, I think the only, only real, you know, uh, opportunity that I gave myself, um, yeah. you know, to, to, to build my relationship with God. And, and I think I bought a Bible. You know? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, you did? Yeah. I think I did buy a Bible. Uh, you know, it was, a uh, I had a King James or something like that. Yeah. You know, I couldn't yeah, understand yeah. anything that was going on in it, but. But it made you feel. Yeah. Feel yeah. a little bit. Hey, yeah. At least I got a Bible. I'm yeah. serious about yeah. this. Yeah. Man, I yeah. prayed. I didn't have cancer anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Uh, so you got an agent your senior year. Well, afterwards, yeah, it was after the senior year. I, 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 I was lucky and well, smart enough that I, 
I, uh, I, I graduated. I got my degree in those four years. Um, so, um, some guys don't finish, you know, but I, I made sure that was my mom always made sure that academics was, was a big deal. So even though she's pushing sports, you're a student athlete. Yeah. yeah well, mom I, gets it. I sat out of a, a, a varsity baseball game my senior year because I had, I think a D, mm. you know, in, in one of my classes and I wasn't allowed to play until I came. I, I got it up, you know, but. She, it was A's and B's. That was it. Yeah. You know, she Good was man. very, very much that way. I, I actually graduated with a three point something, 3.05 or, you know, I don't know what it was, but you know, at Eastern. So I was, I was a good student, you know, uh, but no things were, were good that way. Um, yeah. So I got an agent, uh, started, you know, working out, doing the, doing those types of things. Um, you know, had pro day, you know, a lot of scouts, you know, looking and everything like that. Uh, draft day came, um, or draft weekend. Um, there was a little bit of talk about the possibility of getting drafted, but, uh, nothing came, but right after that, um, right after that, I, uh, um, I signed with the Detroit Lions. So they called, called up my agent said, Hey, we want to sign him, you know, undrafted free agent. And, and so, and the small little signing bonus and, you know, kind of do all those you know, you'll be here through the summer. And so I, I signed with them and that's where I, and I always wanted to be there, obviously, you know, hometown <laughs> yeah. boy. Yeah. Like you were a Lions yeah. fan. Oh yeah. Yeah. Lions but fan. But you wanted to be Barry. But oh yeah. Now you're okay. Yeah. It's like, yeah. hey, listen, yeah, that was, that's that was a big deal. Option, Sign, this is the league. Yeah. So this is Sunday. We've got my chance, man. You know, um, I thought I was going to go in. I thought I was going to be the man and I definitely was not. You know, what was I, that like? Like, man, like, do you immediately that's go? Be crazy. Because the draft yeah, wasn't is very in long after that. spring, right? Yeah, they had uh, uh, mini camps and stuff like that through the. So you leave school to go to mini camp? Well, I, I mean, school gets done pretty early. The draft okay. was actually actually the draft weekend was the weekend I graduated. Okay, so All right. it it just worked out really well. And after that, it was yeah, it was go go to to camp and do those you know be with the team and um it was at that time it was Mariucci's last year, um. And, uh, but you know, I was, I was really frustrated at that point because, um, I was the last man on the totem pole, you know, uh, mm-hmm. I was no longer the dude. I was no longer the man, you know, I'm, you're, you're the bottom feeder basically. The I got outs- like, you're the outsider again. Yeah. I guess you could say that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, you know, just like any football team. It's just, I wasn't, I wasn't expected to be that guy. You know, they mm-hmm. didn't look at me in that way, which is how I was used to being looked at. Um, you know, I would get one rep in team during each practice. You know, you're not going to make the team doing that, you know, right. bottom wow. line. So like, it's like, so you, you're doing all the, sorry, I'm a total rookie yeah. here. So you're doing all the physical stuff, all yeah. the workout part, yeah. but then when it comes to the scrimmage or whatever you want to call it, yeah. you're in for one play. That's it. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, bo- that's basically it. You, you know, there's a lot of do. I mean, you, you look at, uh, NFL training camp, the actual camp that happens in the fall. There's 90 some dudes that's going to get cut down to 54, you know? Wow. And so it's kind of cutthroat, you yeah. know, and uh, nobody was going to let me have their reps, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. you had to do it and like you had to make a name for yourself somehow. I mean, there was scout team, there was those types of things where you would try to, you know, sh- show what you could do, but you can't go too hard and injure somebody right. yeah. that's a starter. Like yeah. that's a sure way to get kicked out right yeah. away, you know, yeah. get cut, <laughs> you know? <laughs> There's cutthroat and then you know, they're stupid. Yeah. And there was <laughs> yeah. guys that were, you know, there was a little bit of politics involved too. Like guys, yeah, sure. there was guys that I came in with in a similar position to I was that they were like schmoozing with the scouts and, you know, the, mm-hmm. the different management and they were, you know, may, being buddy, buddy with them. I was not that kind of guy, but the management liked the guys that they, that were, they were friendly with, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I didn't get those opportunities. I remember going to, it was actually the weekend before camp was supposed to start. Uh, I come up here, uh, with the family and everything like that. Uh, we all go to, uh, Pirates Cove and who's there, but Mariucci. <laughs> and so I shake. Wait, Pirates Cove, like mini golfing? Mini golfing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why the Lions yeah. didn't win under Mariucci. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's he doing mini golfing? Well, this is, you know, yeah, this yeah, the weekend yeah. before, obviously he's taking a, a short yeah. vacation with his family. Yeah. Uh, and so I shake his hand, you know, I come up to him and shake his hand. I can't wait to be in camp, show you what I can do. And he's like, Oh, excited. We're excited to get started. You know, everything like that. It was two days later. He gave me the call. He said, Hey, uh, Tom, I'm sorry to say this, but there's a numbers game. We gotta, we gotta let you go. 
Mm. You know, we're going to cut you. And the one thing that I will say I respect a lot is the fact that he's the one that called me. Wow. Yeah. Like he called me like, and, and did that because it's usually not, I mean, it's not that coach. Yeah. You know, so I respected that a lot. I was really disappointed because I really didn't feel like I got an opportunity to show what I could do. Like mm. that was the most frustrating thing. So anyways, uh, to make a long story short, I didn't get re-signed practice squad or otherwise. That was my hope. Um, you know, started working cause I had to, you know, have an income and work out to, to, cause I was wanted that opportunity again after the season, that season, Mary, you got fired, but the management was still there and they signed me back and sent me to Europe. So I played NFL Europe for Berlin. Um, yes. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> what? Were they the yeah. Berlin Blitz? The Berlin Thunder. Berlin Thunder. Yeah. Yeah. The Berlin Thunder. And uh, so I had a blast. Kings, so now you're living in Germany. <laughs> yeah. How cosmopolitan yeah. is that? Yeah, it was, it's not yeah, like- It was wild. Yeah, yeah, there's some places in Germany that's a lot of Americans, but yeah. Berlin, you're right in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, It was. I, I loved it. There were some guys that didn't like it. I, I loved being away and be, having to get that opportunity to be experience it, you yeah. know, they had some really good beer in Germany, you know, yeah, <laughs> there was yeah. a few things that, that were a lot of fun that way. Um, what was the level like? What do you mean? Like the playing level. Well, these are all guys that are signed with teams. Okay. Like yeah. uh, now the way that NFL Europe worked, you had to have some international players on the okay. field. So they yep. always had to have at least one international player on the field. So there would be, there was a few Germans on the team. We had, <laughs> we actually had a, uh, a sumo from Japan uh, <laughs> yeah. and nice. uh, Goda, man, he was awesome. I love that dude. But uh, he, uh, he didn't play very much, but um, we always had, I mean, there were, they, we had a really good tight end that was a German um, and uh, defensive end and, you know, a few players that were, were German because yeah. Germans liked uh, American football. Yeah. You know, that, that was more there. So at that point in time, it went from all of Europe down to there was uh, five teams in Germany and one team in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, so it could almost have been the German football <laughs> it league. It could have been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so, but the Germans enjoyed it. They liked yeah, it, and yeah. it was, you know, it kind of makes sense for them. You know, it's yeah. a very physical game, and, um, but, so that's why it kind of had compressed into there. Two years later, the NFL Europe folded, um, but, yeah, so I, I came back, and I was with Detroit again, you know, and so I was in camp this time. I made it past that first weekend. Oh, you did? Wow. <laughs> yeah, so I was in camp. Uh, and did, st- yeah. did, did you grow at all? After college? No. 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 So I mean, you're done there, but you're, yeah. but you are now fully, Yeah, you're fully man. You're 26 yeah, at this time, 27? I'm six foot six. I'm 325 pounds. Uh, and you know, I'm- And I'm you've been really playing in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've been in the trenches, yeah. bro. Well, yeah. well, it was awesome. It was, I got a lot of experience. You yeah. know, I started at right tackle uh, there. I played every, every game, all but four snaps because they put Gota in just to get him in, oh, in the Gota. game one time. And it is- I like Gota. Yeah, I don't Gota. even know. Yeah. <laughs> she Sumo taught me guy. all about sushi, man. That yeah. guy was awesome. Yeah, I think he was a sushi sa- chef actually too. Like he knew wow. how to do that. Uh, but, uh, he was awesome. Um, but they, uh, uh, but yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I had re- I mean, I did really well in Germany. So I was, I was feeling good about my chances coming back because all these other guys, um, you know, are going to their, their respective teams. They have contracts too. And so, um, there's now I'm going to get my shot. I'm going to get my opportunity to play and, uh, going to camp. It's still kind of bottom of the totem pole, right? Uh, get to play in some preseason games. So I start getting in and, and I do really well, you know, I, there's, they're like starting to feed me more reps, starting to, all right, Kalita, we, we see that you can do this. And so, you know, they started to give me a little bit more to do, a little bit more to do. And then, you know, about a week before the cut down happens, uh, one of the defense linemen goes down, um, like with an ACL or something like that. But if you know anything about camp, it's a numbers game. Like there's, mm-hmm. they're, they're always shuffling, you know, this guy, you know, we'll, we'll cut this guy to make room for this guy and that stuff. So they had to bring in another defense lineman and I got cut. Like the, the coaches didn't know it was the management that made the cut. Second time. Yeah. So I, I got, you know, I was, I was in the, in the, uh, the locker room. I remember, uh, somebody came by, I don't know, was, I guess he was a security guy. He said, Hey, uh, you need to come with me and bring your playbook. You know, I joke with like that with people now. I'm like, oh, you get called to the office, you better bring a playbook, you know. <laughs> yeah, because you got to turn it in. Because I got to turn in the playbook, man. Wow. Well, the fun thing is. is so I essentially had, you heard it from the security guard. Well, yeah. But so he's taken me to the management, the, the I can't remember, general manager or whatever, who's going to, you know, actually do the deed. But I knew at that point. Yeah. I was done. Oh, man. You know, so 
uh, hoping that I was going to get a chance to come back. They were going to call me back and be on practice squad or, you know, something like that. Um, but it, that, I never got that call. Uh, arena football, uh, called my agent, uh, or my agent contact. I don't know where, what transpired there, but I got an opportunity to do that. And so that's what took me down to Florida is, you know, I, I had that opportunity to play arena football. I didn't know if I was going to like to do that. It's a different ball game in the sense of like, there's three linemen versus five, um, eight man, um, mm-hmm. And there's walls and it's all on turf and it's all, you know, all these different things. I'm like, ah, man, this game looks like it's going to be, I don't know if it's going to be for me. So anyways, go down there, uh, get the opportunity, um, start playing, you know, you make friends on teams, right? Mm -hmm. I would say this, uh, my least favorite time in my career was when I was with the Lions because I was always looking over my shoulder. Right. Like it, you, you always knew that you were one bad snap away mm-hmm. from being that pressure. dude, you know, pressure. to be, being gone. So it was, it was a constant pressure. It was constant anxiety when it came down to that. I got the opportunity to go down to, uh, Tampa and play for the Tampa Bay storm. And that pressure wasn't as, 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 as strong, you know, I, you know, it was different. You had to learn a different way to, to play. Um, just because it's a, it's a very pass heavy game mm-hmm. and, there's a short edge. And so, uh, you have to play a little bit more laterally. You can't take the same set you would as, a, as an offensive tackle because the, the, the pocket is so small. Uh, so it, it took a little bit to, to learn what that is, but eventually I, I did, we went and played in the scrimmage and I just balled out, you know, I had, and I had a blast. I was like, I love this game. Like, this is fun. <laughs> like, <laughs> Let it's me like keep a doing combo it. of football and basketball because <laughs> yeah. we're inside. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's you know, not the, even close. The, I just was the in the dark there. Yeah. The weather's controlled, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's not like I'm in Tampa, but I'm comfortable. You know, we played in the same place that the Tampa Bay lightning played. Um, and, um, it was, it was fun. And I, I played five seasons. I think it was, Wow. uh, five seasons. Five years you're in Tampa. Five years. I was, well, yeah. When, and, and, you know, eventually, um, yeah, so I played five seasons with the Tampa Bay Storm, uh, kind of made my name for myself locally down there. It was fun, you know, got to do a lot of cool stuff, a lot of fun things, get invited to do certain things, you know, uh, shake hands with people, you know, kind of do that. You, you became that guy again, you yeah. know, that feeling, mm-hmm. um, Tracy, she got a job down there, um, uh, teaching. And so, um, that's, that's kind of. Uh, we, she moved down there and so we, we were going to start a life down there. You know, that's, uh, kind of our path. Um, after that first or second season, I, you know, we couldn't quite remember, but we said, uh, we should go to church, (laughs) you know. Now, now are you married yet? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think we, we got married after the first, um, well, it was after the second season. Okay. She was down there. She came. She came down there uh, after the first. Um, I think it was. Um, she's still the biggest fan. Yeah, she's cheering. She's <laughs> yeah. at all the games. So all yeah. the kids in her class think she's the yeah. coolest because she's like, "I'm going to Tampa Bay Storm." Yeah, game. that's right. Oh, you need tickets? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you work hard on that quiz? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So. <laughs> but you decided to go to church. Yeah. So it's yeah, and so we had. Uh, I think there was just down the street from where we were, there was a St. James Methodist church. Um, and so we decided to, uh, you know, check it out. Um, there was, uh, Brett Dietz who, uh, love that, love that man. Um, he was the quarterback, uh, my, our rookie year together, he was the Roy. So he was the rookie of the year. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we got, had a really good relationship, but he kind of, um, invited me to things like FCA. Nice. So an FCA meeting, he, he kind of said like, Hey, what, let's go check this out, you know? And so we all, I think we all went, ended up going to St. James together just to check it out and everything. One of the things that I remember from that is like, there was a, we went to, I think we went to the contemporary service and the lead singer and his brother, they came up to us immediately afterwards. Cause it was, there was not a lot of people there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was not a lot of people there. Um, and they were just like, Hey you know, who are you guys? And you know, why, why'd you come and you should keep coming and, you know, doing those things, they, you know, ex- extremely friendly Visitor, with us. There's life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Tell us what the outside Please world is. You know, not everybody's got blue hair, you yeah, know, exactly. you know, cause that's, 
um, you know, so, and they were kind of our age. Um, yeah. the, the younger brother was a few years younger than us, but the other one is was a week older than uh, I am. So, and he always let me know that he was older than me. Yeah, you know, but week. but they became our family away from mm. you know uh, Michigan. You know that that family took us in. We did you know uh, birthday parties. We did you know, holidays. We did all those things with that family. And they were a big deal in, in moving us along because they were, you know, big part of the church. Tracy ended up part of the praise band, you know. Playing bass? Playing bass. Come on. At that church. That's, you know, um, you know, which she hadn't been able to do in a long time. And, and believe it or not, we, we ended up getting roped into running the youth program, the, you know, youth group. Whoa. And I was terrible. Let me tell you. Like that was not what I should have been doing. <laughs> like I did, I still didn't know what was what what, what to do. Yeah. You know, I I wasn't very grounded. I you know I was a believer. We were going to church. We were doing the things that you know, you know that 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 growth is happening now. But to lead kids like that, you now fortunately it was her and you know one of the buddies, you know one of those brothers that helped us yeah. out. I just kind of was there, but. Um, and you were the bouncer. Yeah. You're the bouncer. And yeah. you said this guy, Brett, was, was he a pretty solid Christian guy? Oh yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so he was kind of instrumental in, yes. hey bro, well, yeah. l- let's kind of go do this yeah. stuff. So they, they really kind of, uh, he, he helped, uh, definitely foster that. Mm-hmm. Um, him and another law dog was another guy that he was a long-term vet in the arena football league. He, he was another one that was a really good influence in mm-hmm. that way. Um, so really started to, you know, kind of say like, all right, you know, let's, let's have a, let's see what this is about and have a yeah. relationship. Yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of where I would say something actually started, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, you know, other than knowing, <laughs> you know, that this is, this is yeah. real, uh, knowing what to do with it right. and that there was, there was a future that, you know, that there's, there's something that you're supposed to do other than just know, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. So yeah, we got heavily involved in that church. Um, That's and, big time. Yeah, yeah. So that that was a big start. Um, now, you may or may not have said this at some point. Yeah. I don't remember if you said this at a fight club. Yeah. And yeah, no, it, it was probably in your basement, either watching a Super Bowl or a national championship of college football. I remember. I think I remember you saying. The five years, the five seasons at Arena Football was the most fun you had playing football yeah. in your career. Uh, yeah, I think Is so. that accurate? Yeah, probably. No I disrespect to the rest. You still no. love high school, yeah. college. You watch yeah. the it was, NFL. It was, it, was very, it was a very simple game, and it was mono a mono You know, mm-hmm. it, was, it was me versus you. There was very little, a uh, few things that they could do scheme-wise on the defense to gain an advantage. So, like, I knew that I was blocking you, this dude. He knew I was blocking him. These guys are basically, there's pass rush specialists. So it's, you know, because, you know, we might have 70 plays of offense and 65 of them are going to be pass plays. So everybody knows what we're doing. So it's just, I just, I, my job is to protect him, Brett, yeah, you know, from this dude. And I would do everything in my power to, to, to prevent that from happening. And I got really good at it, you know. And the fun thing is, is like in, there's a lot of dudes that know how to talk trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, I'm not a talker. Uh <laughs> So at the beginning of the game, it was always fun to hear what the things that they would say. They they were you know, pretty creative, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the defensive yeah. ends, uh, little hot headed, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I remember after two drives, they weren't talking anymore. You know, yeah. that's that was that was my goal was to be like, all right, you know, let's see what you got. I'm gonna shut you up though. <laughs> yeah. So that that usually worked out in my favor. It, the the uh, and I don't want to dive too much into this, but it looks like in arena football, it's about the size of a hockey rink. Yeah, same size. Yeah, which yeah. would mean it's the same as an indoor soccer field. They just use yeah. all those arenas oh, yeah. for the same three sports sure. and ice capades. Yeah, which makes sense. Uh, but uh, the picture in your basement mm-hmm. is you're carrying the ball and you're coming yeah. in a hurry. Yeah. Now, was that because of different rules or you had There's you picked up a rules. fumble? Yeah, so yeah. unfortunately, one of the things that got me back to you know being a tight end type of thing is there's three linemen, but one of them is eligible. There you go. So, you know, you're blocking most of the game. And you've got good hands. Yeah, and I got good hands. <laughs> and so, so and, you know, it's still pretty athletic. Uh, so, you know, there's a, you know, a half dozen times or a dozen times during the year where I'd, I'd get my number called, we'd run a screen pass or something like that. And so, uh, you know, you get that opportunity for a little bit of glory. It was fun. And another reason that it was fun, you know what I mean? Uh, That, that game was, you know, I, I loved it. I, I miss it. I wish I could still be playing, you know, and I probably could have played longer than I did, but, uh, 
family, you know, yeah. you know, things were happening. I wasn't getting paid what I was when it first started the league restructured. I could no longer make a living doing it. So I had to work and play yep. and, it, and then, then family, and then it just became too much. And, yeah. um, so I had to, I had to hang up the cleats, but, um, that but you're married now. I'm married. Are kids on the way. Oh, uh, we had, already? we had Landon. Landon so first. Landon yeah. was, uh, was there. I remember working, going to practice, coming home, getting a few hours of sleep, getting up because Landon needed to be fed and then, you know, up for an hour, putting them down, going to bed for a few more hours, getting up, going to work. And just kind of, kind of going mm. through that process. It was mm-hmm. hard, but I, but I loved it. Yeah. You know, I loved it. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of. And all this time you're at the Methodist church. And we're, yeah, we're, we're at the Methodist church. At some point in time, there was a shakeup in the church, unfortunately. And so we ended up, we, we moved a little bit further away. Um, not that it was far, but um, we were still had a, you know, a, a great relationship with it. But there's a lot of things that happened at the church that, um, probably should have happened to be honest with you, but we, we weren't fans of it. And, yeah. um, and so, you know, that family, the, the Riley's who were so, such a big part of it, they ended up leaving the church. Uh, and so, well, they're kind of our anchor there. Yeah. So we end up leaving the church and for a while there, we all looked for a new church, but we never could really get that. And we ended up going to another Methodist church that was much larger, uh, South Pasadena, I think it was South well, either way, um, uh, uh, and and just going, but we weren't really, you know, uh, uh, we were just a number at yeah. that. You know, so it was, what what brought you guys back to Michigan then? Yeah, so, uh, so um, you yeah, know, when what really brought us back to Michigan was, um, my my mom had come, my mom and dad had come down to visit, and, um. They, they came down, it was, it was really weird because my mom had all these bruises on her arms. She worked at Home Depot. She, you know, fairly physical, uh, job, but she had all these bruises all over. And my dad is not, I mean, you wouldn't think that there was anything that was going on between them. Like my dad is as gentle as they come, you know? So there was no way it was that, but she had all these bruises on her. It was weird. She's like, yeah, I don't know. Um, cause they, they, they came down for a week and during that week she started not feeling good. And she went to like an urgent care just to get checked out. And they said, immediately, you got to go to the emergency room down here. So they, they sent her to, you know, a local hospital to get some tests. Um, while she was down there, she was, uh, she was diagnosed with uh, stage four pancreatic cancer. Um, Tracy, at this point in time, she's seven months pregnant hmm. with Natalie. Um, and, uh, uh, the, so we, uh, uh, th- th- they have, I think it's DeVos, um, yep. down there in Tampa. And so they were going to go, well, I mean, we had tests, we had, you know, some treatment things that, you know, we, we were taking her there. My, my mom, my dad was taking her over there for, you know, to, to consult and to, you know, to see what we we're going to do about this, but stage four pancreatic cancer, all the, all the clinic trials and all that stuff they're like they're not going to take her you know but we had hope you know we we were we were hoping that this was going to happen but so and then she had some complications here and there there was you know a few things that would happen that kept them down and so they they were down there with us for about a month um towards the end of that uh my mom was complaining that she couldn't breathe and she went to uh she, um, my dad said, I mean, she was starting to get blue in the lips and everything like that. So my dad, uh, put her in the car and, and they were headed to Tampa. We we're living on the other side of the right. bridge, uh, to, to go to DeVos, uh, so that she can get checked out. She stops breathing on the, on the Howard Franklin bridge, which is, uh, a, a big like expressway, yeah. you know, everything like that. So she's not breathing. He pulls over to the side of the road and is, and, and does CPR on her. Um, and obviously calls 911 and, you know, they come and get her, take her to Tampa general, uh, to try and revive her. They revive her, um, sort of, um, and, um, my sister had actually flown down at that time, um, because she was going to, they were going to leave that next week. She was going to fly back home with mom. My dad was going to drive the car, um, so that they could, you know, that was the plan. 
Um, so me and my sister, we, my dad calls in a, in a hysterical panic. Um, <laughs> takes her to, uh, on his way to Tampa general, my sister and I jump in the, in, in the car and we go and we're going, we're going to be there. Well, the, the doctors basically by the time they, they, she's on all kinds of machines to keep her alive. Um, the doctors basically said she was without air for 20 minutes, you know, um, right now, the only thing that's keeping her alive is these machines. You guys need to decide what you guys are going to do. My dad wanted to keep treating her thinking that there was going to be a chance. I, and, and, and basically my sister and I were like, dad, um, if she, doesn't need to be on a machine. She's likely to be a vegetable and she's going to go through treatments and it's just going to kill her anyways. <sighs> I remember going, us going into another room as we're being told, you know, what, what the options are. Um, there's a lady there that's there to, uh, tell us what, what the deal is or no, I'm sorry. The doctors told us what the deal was. She's there to kind of help us, right. like just emotionally and yeah. kind of go through this. And at that point in time, I, 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 I don't know what to do. Like, I, I can't, I, I can't do anything. And this is one of the first times in my life where I can't do anything about this. Like, this is like, I'm supposed to be able to do this, like to fix it. Yeah. Like I, I could always do anything, overcome it, like. I, I could, I could be the, the rock and I, and I'm not, I remember her looking at me because I'm pacing and I, you know, I'm, I'm just, d again, just, just so wound up about having my hands tied behind my back that she's like, you know, are, are, are you okay? I'm like, no. And she's like, I am really getting some, you know, some vibes from you. And I'm like, and I, all I wanted to do, I wanted to throw a sofa through the window. You know, I, I was so, so angry, um, at the situation. I mean, just not having any, any ability whatsoever to do anything about it, but, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I just, I just couldn't, I, I didn't know how to handle it. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I was praying and doing those types of things because this is what I'm supposed to do. Right. I, I do have a relationship, but I'm angry, you know, yeah. I'm really mad about this because she came down, they came down just to visit and, and now we're pulling a plug, you know, Unreal. um, a month later. So that's, that's at that point after that, you know, Tracy and I decided that, you know, after Natalie was born, we we're going to start taking steps to move back to, to Michigan. So she passed away in Tampa. Yeah. Funeral up here. Funeral up here. I, yeah. Tracy couldn't travel. Um, yeah, she's. Yeah. So at that point she's. Almost eight months. She's eight months pregnant. Yeah. Uh, she couldn't travel. So I, I brought Landon up. He's three. Um, and, uh, and then, then we had her, her funeral in Kingsley. So, wow. you know, I, I, and yeah, so that's kind of, you know, that part of the story that that's kind of what took us away from Florida, I guess that the straw, you yeah. know, you know, there's things that we, I loved about Florida, you know, the Rileys, they were great. They were very supportive through that process. There was the next step in your faith journey. But there's still, but there's it's interesting, there's more trauma. Yeah. There's more trauma. Yeah. I, I, I'm I not strong enough, you know, yeah. is, is the bottom line. We're starting to see the cracks. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I can't be everything. I can't do all. Like, is, I'm not strong enough to do that. Like, that's, there's, there's, I just don't have that. Like, I've never not been strong enough, you know, but I'm not. Um, I was, I was fortunate enough. There was the year before my mom passed away. Um, there was a little bit of, you know, drama that, that had happened and I felt guilt. It was, it was my fault and I felt really guilty about that. And so I started to call my mom a couple of days a week and I, I, I had a devotional app that I would read her the devotion because I, I don't know how much of a relationship that she had or they weren't really going to church, but I, I felt the need to, to, to do that. Hmm. 
And so three, three times, three, four times a week, I was talking to her. I would read the devotional and we'd talk about it over the phone. <laughs> it was more than I'd ever talked to her on a regular basis. <sighs> but that's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. We're not just talking about football here, Adam. I know, man. Um, I am thinking, though. Yeah, uh, this is a good time to take a break. Yeah. yeah. We're going to need yeah. to do part We're two. We're going to need to take a break. Um, you can come back, right? Yeah. We can do a part two. We can do a part two. I would love a part two because I'm seeing a theme. Yeah. And on the one hand, I see incredible pain, whether it's a little kid being bullied, a kid feeling like an outsider, having just the little peak awakenings of a relationship with God to now, you know, it says that, uh, well, well, Christ said, Jesus said, no one can come to me unless my father in heaven draws him first. Yeah. And it's evident from the time you were a young lad all the way up to this moment from moving from Tampa back to Kingsley, mm -hmm. you've just dealt with cancer. You've dealt with disappointment. Um, you found sparks of life. Uh, what you call them, the reader, re, re, the the Reed family, the Rileys, Rileys, the yeah. Riley family. Um, I can see the drawing, yeah, mm -hmm. but there's still pain, yeah. and uh, this is a scary place to end. But we're we're <laughs> or to take a break, but we're taking a break with Angry Tom, <laughs> mm -hmm. and he's not like, are you sure at this point who you're angry at? Are you <laughs> angry at life? Are you angry at God? Or are you just angry? I think I was angry at God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it took me a while. Well, we'll get to the wild because I'm fascinated yeah. with this story. Yeah. And I thank you so much, dude. We're going to do a part two. Are you going to yeah. let a different producer in here, Matt? Or are you galvanized? Yeah. Oh, he's in. <laughs> oh, he's in. Sweet. Adam, you got anything else before we sign no, off? Man. We definitely got so you part wanted, two, I think. Yeah, you got it. Oh, well, for sure. And we've got to, um, yeah, we'll click off this one and uh, uh, because of time constraints. But we want to get on to the next one. But yeah. um, thank you for going there with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you you are not holding back, and I'm learning. I'm learning right now. Yeah. The student has become the teacher, and you are teaching me <laughs> in a big way. But yeah, yeah, I, sure. I think as soon as we break, I might bury my feelings in a trace gate. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very but, helpful. Okay, Tab family, um, this is part one with Tom Kalita. We got to come up with a good title. Yeah, something like from outsider to insider, or from getting hit in the face with a brick. Yeah. I don't know. That's something like <laughs> yeah. that. We'll, we'll, we'll work out. on it. But uh, yeah, until part two, this is uh, Adam Sharp, Thomas Kalita, Matt Hughes, and John Vermillion signing off.